History is made in Anambra State as the Independent National Electoral Commission presented a certificate of return to Professor Chukuma Soludo and his deputy, Dr. Oyeka Ibizim, for winning the Anambra State governorship election under the All Progressives Grand Alliance Party. Now, this presentation is the sign of a new beginning in Anambra State governance. This and other electoral activities leading to the success of Professor Chukuma Soludo and his party will be our focus on special report this week. You're welcome to the program. I'm Olumide Macaulay. Anambra State, the eighth most populated state in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It happens to also be the second most densely populated state after Lagos. The boundaries of Anambra State are formed by Delta State to the west, Imo and Rivers to the south, Anugu State to the east, and Kogi State to the north. Politically, Anambra State was marked by considerable unrest until the early 21st century. Having a long list of firsts in Nigerian history, it has been known as the light of the nation. On the 29th of May 1999, Chimoke Mbadinoju was sworn as the first civilian governor of Anambra State after many years of military rule. On 26 May 2003, Dr. Chris Ngege was sworn in as the new governor of the state but he was removed in March 2006 after Peter Obi of APGA filed charges against him of electoral malpractice. The Court of Appeal in Enugu asserted that Dr. Ngige's apparent victory in the 2003 election was fraudulent and ordered him to vacate the governorship seat. His successor, Governor Peter Obi, was ousted by a faction of the Anambra State House of Assembly on 2nd of November 2006 and replaced by Virginia Etiaba, his deputy. On the 9th of February 2007, Mrs. Etiaba handed over power to Peter Obi after the Court of Appeal had nullified Mr. Obi's removal. On the 14th of April 2007, Andu Ba of the People's Democratic Party was elected as the new governor of the state and on the 29th of May was sworn in. The election was however reported to be massively rigged on the 14th of June 2007. The Supreme Court of Nigeria ruled that Mr. Peter Obi's tenure had not ended. Therefore, there was no vacancy in the governorship. The ruling led to the removal of Andu Ba from office, replacing him with his predecessor, Mr. Peter Obi. On the 6th of February 2010, Peter Obi was re-elected governor for a second term of four years. After a hot contest with Chris Ngige, a former governor of the state, Professor Charles Soludo, a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, and Andu Ba, Ms. Obi was affirmed as the winner of the election, having more than 30% votes above the immediate runner-up. On the 17th of March 2014, after winning the governorship seat on the 16th of November 2013, Governor Willie Obiano of the All Progressives Grand Alliance was sworn in for a second term in office on the 17th of March 2018 after the victory at the 18th of November 2017 elections. The race for who will be the successor began weeks ago in Anambra State. 36 party candidates keenly contested for the elections, and prominent amongst them is Professor Chukuma Soludo, Mr. Valentine Ozigo, Mr. Anduba, and Mr. Ifan Yuba of the YPP. We, the members of the National Peace Committee, have come to Anambra State to support a peaceful electoral process. We cherish Anambra State, and we cherish the peace and unity of Nigeria. Most importantly, we want to contribute our own quota to see that the, gov the governorship election in a number of states is divorce of violence. Therefore, the signing of the peace accord today is not a mere exercise. It is indeed a clarion call for all the candidates and the political parties and all Anambarians to, uh, to commit themselves to a peaceful process. We call on all the candidates, their parties and supporters to accept the outcome of the vote as long as it is adjudged to be free, fair and credible. And I have been assured 
by the chairman of INEC that all efforts, everything is put on deck to ensure a free and fair election. Faced with the current situation in Anambra State, the Commission once again appealed to the Peace Committee to bring parties and candidates to commit to peace before, during, and after the elections. We believe that Anambra cannot be different from Edo and Ondo. For this reason, we are also confident that just like Edo and Ondo, the election on Saturday will be peaceful and the outcome will reflect the will of the Anambra voters. After the dust raised by some group of persons over no election in Anambra state had settled, and the electoral body moved in back up with all security agencies and the military to ensure adequate safety before, during and after the elections, the day finally debuted. The election was the first major election where the Independent National Electoral Commission used the bimodal voter accreditation device and transmitted results online with polling unit workers uploading results directly to the INEC results portal. The election was also the first to use new polling units formed by INEC in June 2021. The trend of results that is coming in is different. I will, I will tell you that Anambra will, have, Anambra will have been born in because people have said no. Anambra is the first to organize a governorship election in the new technology where, vote, where rigging is impossible. You see what is going to be replicated in the 36 other states. Unlike what people are saying that we're going to come and take Anambra by force, let me tell you what they are going to see. The fulcrum of, 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 of activism to take Anambra by force is going to be the next change. Anambra people are going to have a hand in changing dead wood leadership in neighboring states. The dead wood. So this is the beginning of a revolution that is going to clear away people who should not occupy public office. The turnout at the start of the day of the election was not impressive. Many residents did not come out for the accreditation process. As the day progresses, some eligible voters came out to cast their votes. The security across the state was also encouraging. The Commissioner of Police in Anambra State believes collaboration is key in any process and the joint election security will work round the clock to ensure safety of the votes, the voters and the electoral officials. We talk about transporters who refuse to convey materials except they are paid their money and it took them time to do this. Some of the places that you never had election was because when the materials got to the place late. But these are not security related issues. The report I had was that security was everywhere and election was going on smoothly as I speak. They are the collision center trying to collect and after that they will come to occur here. Instances where you had a little bit of, uh, I mean, uh, infraction somewhere and quickly we took care of it. But not this extent that we are hearing here that it is because of security that the election has been shifted to tomorrow. I don't, I don't agree with that assessment. D. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Valentine Ozigbo, cast his vote at a messy ward of Aguata local government area of the state. <laughs> If it's taking me um, more than 20 minutes to cast my vote, then I'm worried. So I want to commend INEC for an excellent job they've done, the ability to introduce this machine that will help us to check fraud and rigging. But on the other hand, we should actually now know that if this is the experience we're having all over Anambra State, uh, even if it's not, even if in some few places, that we must insist that there is extension of time in those places. I thank God that the uh, cloud around this election, which was the seeming alleged you know, um, order from IPOP, had since been relaxed. So there's absolutely no reason for anybody uh, to um, show any form of restraint in coming out. For the YPP candidate, Ifan Uba, he exercised his franchise at Ward 1 of Newe North Local Government Area.
Well, you can see there's a, a lot of uh, people. People came out in mass to vote. That's the most important thing. So uh, there's no voter apathy from my own understanding in this my polling unit. And um, yeah, we had a bit of um, issue with the the card, the yeah, biometrics, but we, we sorted it out at the end of the day. I believe um, in um, the structures of uh, INEC. I'm part of the legislators that are trying to see how INEC can improve. So um, the most important thing is to run the race and see what the end of the result will be. Dr. Andy Uba of the APC voted at Ward 16 of Uga community of Aguata local government area. By the end of the day, we are going to win. There's no question. My friend, how you see that kind of way? You look at what people are collapsing. Now, the, the, the uh, governor's own ward chairman collapsed to the APC. What do you think? He's going to vote for us and we're going to win. Almost 12.30, 12.30. Um, in the day, voting is yet to start in most of the polling units in the state. And then uh, for the few places where they are doing, technology that I understand ought to take seconds to accredit someone takes 20 minutes, some 30, some 5, and so on. Professor Chukuma Soludo of APCA, who complained bitterly about the initial hitches witnessed with the machine, later voted at Umweze Isofia of Aguata local government area. The general election was mostly peaceful but faced difficulties with expectedly low turnout, malfunctioning election equipment, and a few voided results, most notably with the election in the Hiala local government area being cancelled and rescheduled due to irregularities and insecurity. We know who we vote for. Nobody will detect us for who we go there. It's our civic rights. Ihala's rescheduled election was set for November 9th, with the results being needed before a winner could be declared. Ihala local government headquarters, the central distribution point for the supplementary elections to wrap up the Anambra governorship election, and the ad hoc staff are setting out for the election. Security is tight, both on land and air, to ensure no breach of the peace. Although the process kicks off late in some polling stations with accreditation and voting. With counting done, the vote was clearly in favor of Professor Chukuma Soludo. The supplementary election of today is essentially to decide between PDP, Afga, and uh, ADC. So that's the way I say. Uh, my party ADC didn't perform well enough to compete in today's election. So we felt, after consulting with my leaders and other men of goodwill in the state, convinced that the way to go forward today is to persuade my followers and uh, mem members of my community to focus and vote to pick a leader today. And I decided that I was going to vote APCA. I'm happy I voted APCA. And I'm happy that my local government, my town, people are coming out because they are out here to vote APCA. So I'm convinced that at the end of today, we are going to have a state that has a government in waiting. And that governor will commit himself, as Soludo has done in my conversation with him yesterday, to build a government that will respect the will of the people. In total, Professor Soludo got over 112,000 votes and 46.5% of the vote. As runner-up, Mr. Ozigbo obtained nearly 54,000 votes 
and 22.3% of the vote. In third, Mr. Oba received over 43,000 votes and 17.9% of the vote, while Oba came forth with about 21,000 votes and 8.8% of the vote. That Charles Chukuma Solodu, Solodo, Soludo <laughs> of APGA having satisfied the requirements of the law is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. <laughs> In reaction, Professor Chukuma Soludo, who could not hide his joy over his victory, thanked the people of the state for putting their trust in him. With utmost humility and gratitude to God, I accept the results of the 2021 Anambra governorship election as declared by INEC. And this reflects the supreme will of the Almighty God and an overwhelming sacred mandate of the people. For 12 years since the for us to serve them, we persevered to this divine moment. This is a divine journey whose time has come. To God be all the glory and adoration. We are humbled by the massive support of stakeholders and Nigerians across the entire country. Your donations and goodwill are immensely treasured. At this moment, we must remember and will continue to remember all those who died in the course of this movement, especially the three policemen who were killed by unknown gunmen during our town hall meeting with use in my word. May God continue to grant their souls eternal rest. Amen. The run-up to this election, and the election itself tested the resilience and integrity of our federal institutions. Many times there were tensions especially as one party boasted that it must, quote, take or, quote, conquer Anambra by all means. Our institutions proved again and again that this country can achieve eminent greatness when our institutions rise up to the occasion. The judiciary, led by the President of the Court of Appeal and the Chief Justice of Nigeria, stood for the integrity of the judiciary. We salute the Anambra High Court, Court of Appeal, and Supreme Court for standing up for justice. Your names will be written in gold. We thank President Bush and our security agencies in the field. We must particularly for FINEC for systematically striving to be with the and transparent electoral system to Nigeria. The Accreditation system represents a massive improvement a manual accreditation system with a technology of scaling of the skills of its operators, collaboration with improvement in logistical deployment and punishment for anyone involved in electoral malpractice. Nigeria will be on course to a robust and exemplary electoral system. Aside from the initial glitches in the operations of the Beavers machines in some places, including at my polling unit, the election has the most peaceful, free, fair, and credible. There is joy in the land. Kudos to INEC. He also promised to run an all-inclusive government. To my fellow candidates in the election, I wish to congratulate you for the gallant contest. Our people have spoken overwhelmingly, and surely that voice is the voice of God. The ultimate winner is Anambra people. We are all winners. I hereby extend my hand of fellowship to all of you. I need all of you to succeed. 
politics aside, we are all brothers. I will need the guidance, advice, and contribution of everyone to succeed. Our state is one of infinite possibilities and humongous opportunities. Working in collaboration with other states, the federal government, and the international community, we have all it takes to make our state whatever we collectively will that it can be. As we transit to a post-oil world and into the fourth industrial revolution, let us work together to build upon the foundations of our founding fathers and predecessors to create that livable and prosperous homeland that is the industrial technology and leisure hub of West Africa. This is our manifest destiny, and collectively, we shall get there. Finally, let us all work together to support our ably working governor, Apokwe Dike Aguilari, Chief Sir Willie Marabrochukwobiano, to finish very strong. Anambra will continue to get better. It is better already, but it will continue to get better and better and better. Together we can, and by the grace of God, we will. Long live Africa, long live Anambra State, long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. People who thought that 21 over 21 was a fluke have seen history repeat itself in a most memorable way. 19 over 21 is a massive repeat of history. The difference is just two. And so against intimidating odds, we stood tall and reclaimed the dignity of our people. In their number, we proved to the, be the true sons and daughters of our fathers and mothers and lived out the full meaning of our motto, the light of the nation. Fellow citizens, this sweet victory belongs to you. It belongs to that courageous woman in Ebenebe who turned down the 5,000 bribe for her vote because she knew that though money could buy her temporary relief, but Anambra would be a better place if she voted according to her conscience. It belongs to our loyal party men and women who resisted temptations on the financial inducements from rival parties to fight under the banner of APGA because they knew that victory for APGA is victory for ordinary citizens of our dear state. And finally, it belongs to Indian Ambra at home and in diaspora who stood behind APGA, not because we have met all the expectations of our people, but because even in the foundation, my team and I have laid so far, they see enough sunlight to believe that an Ambra state is like the sun, which is bound to rise against all odds. And that is why we won this election. Indian Ambra, in pursuit of excellence, we place merit above narrow interests, we chose a candidate whose pedigree announces itself. Professor Chukuma Soledo has a name to protect. I have no doubt that he will not let you down. However, on a personal level, Ndanambra, you have made me proud. You have shown the world that when a determined people come together as one in pursuit of what is right and just, they bend the act of justice in their favor. I must quickly warn, however, that the victory we celebrate today is not a winner-takes-it-all affair. The motto of our great party is Onyaya meaning be your brother and sister's keeper. So our arms are wide open to our brothers and sisters who fought this battle on the other platforms to join APGA. As for those who allowed themselves to be lured away from our great party, our arms are also wide open to them. Please come home. The wound of political battles may be costly, but it heals fast. We must not allow a, b a brief struggle for power, but put a permanent division between families and friends. We must come together to build a prosperous homeland for ourselves and our children. Professor Saludo has been a member of the Economic Advisory Council since 2019 till date. He serves as the Chief Economic Advisor to the former President, Chief Olushe Gwambasunjo. He was the chief executive of the National Planning Commission in 2003. He was the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria between 2004 and 2009. He has a first class honors degree in economics, MSc Economics.
That's our package for the week. Hope you enjoyed every bit of the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alumdia Macaulay. Goodbye.